good morning and welcome to this service this morning on this sixth Sunday of Epiphany. Our service is a service of Holy Communion, the second order, and you'll find that on page 119 of our prayer books. Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Blessed be God's, God's kingdom, kingdom now, now and, and forever. forever. The Lord be with you. And also, and also with, you. with you. Blessed are you when people, <coughs> have, people hate you on account of the Son of Man. Rejoice and leap for joy, for behold, your reward is great in heaven. Let us pray together. Almighty oh, God, God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires are known, and, and from, from whom no secrets are hidden, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration, the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your Holy Name. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. 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 Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God, the Lord is one. You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, and with all your soul, and with all your mind, and with all your strength. Jesus said, This is the great and first commandment, and a second is like it. You shall love your neighbour as yourself. Let us confess our sins in penitence and faith, confident in God's forgiveness. Merciful, Merciful God, our, our Maker and, and our Judge, judge we, have we have sinned against you in thought and word and deed, and in what we, we have failed to do. We, we have not loved you with our whole heart. We, we have not loved our neighbours as ourselves. We repent and are sorry for all our sins. Father, forgive us. us. Strengthen us to love and obey you in your life. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Almighty God, who has promised forgiveness to all who turn to him in faith, pardon you and set you free from all your sins, strengthen you in all goodness, and keep you in eternal life through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. 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 On page 121, let us together say the hymn of praise, the Gloria in excellence. Glory Glory to God in the highest, and peace to God's, God's people on earth. Lord, Lord God, God, Heavenly King, King Almighty God and Father, we worship you, we give you thanks, we praise you for your glory. Lord Jesus Christ, only Son, Son of the Father, Lord God, Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world, have mercy on us. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, receive our prayer. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy, with the Holy Spirit, Spirit, in the in glory of God the Father. Father. Amen. Let us pray. Righteous God, you challenge the powers that rule this world, and you show favour to the oppressed. Instill in us a true sense of justice that we may discern the signs of your kingdom and strive for right to prevail. For the sake of Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Amen. And please receive the prayer readings. The first reading this morning is written in the book of the prophet Jeremiah. Jeremiah, chapter 17, verses 5 to 10. This is what the Lord says. Cursed is the one who trusts in man, who draws strength from mere flesh, and whose heart turns away from the Lord. That person will be like a bush in the wasteland. They will not see prosperity when it comes. They would dwell in the past places of the desert, in a salt land where no one lives. But blessed is the one who trusts in the Lord, whose confidence is in him. They will be like a tree planted by the water that sends out its roots by the stream. It does not fear when heat comes. Its leaves are always green. 
It has no worries in a year of drought and never fails to bear fruit. The heart is deceitful above all things and beyond cure. Who can understand it? I, the Lord, search the heart and examine the mind to reward each person according to their conduct, according to what their deeds deserve. For the word of the Lord. Thank you. Thanks be to God. God. And our psalm this morning is in our pew bulletin on the inside cover. And in psalm number one, we will say this psalm, psalm in your turn verses. Blessed are they who have not walked in the counsel of the ungodly, nor followed the way of sinners, nor taken their seat among the scornful. But, but their delight is in the law of the Lord, and on that law they ponder day and night. They are like trees planted beside streams of water that yield their fruit in due season. Their leaves also shall not wither, and look, whatever they do, it shall prosper. As for the ungodly, it is not so with them. They are like the chaff, which the wind scatters. Therefore the ungodly shall not stand up at the judgment, nor sinners in the congregation of the righteous. For the Lord cares for the way of the righteous. But the ways of the ungodly shall perish. Our epistle is written in the epistle to the Corinthians. 1 Corinthians chapter 15 verses 12 to 20. But if it is preached that Christ has been raised from the dead, how can some of you say there is no resurrection of the dead. If there is no resurrection of the dead, then not even Christ has been raised. And if Christ has not been raised, our preaching is useless, and so is your faith. More than that, we are then found to be false witnesses about God. For we have testified about God that he raised Christ from the dead. But he did not raise him if, in fact, the dead are not raised. For if the dead are not raised, then Christ has not been raised either. And if Christ has not been raised, your faith is futile. You are still in your sins. Then those also who have fallen asleep in Christ are lost. If only for this life we have hope in Christ. We are of all people most to be pitied. But Christ has indeed been raised from the dead, the first fruits of those who have fallen asleep. For the word of the Lord, thanks, thanks be to God. God. We please stand to our God. The Lord be with you. And also, and also with, you. with you. The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to St Luke, chapter 6, beginning at verse 17. Glory to you, Lord, Lord Jesus Christ. Christ. Jesus went down with them and stood on a little level place. A large crowd of his disciples were there, and a great number of people from all over Judea, from Jerusalem, and from the coastal region around Tyre and Sidon, who had come to hear him and those to be healed of their desires and diseases. Those troubled by impure spirits were cured, and the people all tried to touch him, because power was coming from him and healing them all. Looking at his disciples, he said, Blessed are you who are poor, for yours is the kingdom of God. Blessed are you who hunger now, for you will be satisfied. Blessed are you who weep now, for you will laugh. Blessed are you when people hate you, when they exclude you and insult you, and reject your name as evil because of the Son of Man. Rejoice in that day, and leap for joy, because great is your reward in heaven. For that is how their ancestors treated the prophets. 
But woe to you who are rich, for you have already received your comfort. Woe to you who are well fed now, for you will go hungry. Woe to you who love now, for you will mourn and weep. Woe to you when everyone speaks well of you, for that is how their ancestors treated false prophets. For the gospel of our Lord, praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Let us pray. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Can you please be seated? Diedrich Bonhoeffer's book, The Cost of Discipleship, is an amazing and challenging book, especially when you know something about Bonhoeffer's life. Bonhoeffer was a Lutheran pastor and head of the seminary of the German Confession Church through the Second World War. Even before the war, the war started, he openly criticised the political system that had misled the nation and made the Fuhrer its idol and god. He was arrested in 1943, and even while in prison and concentration camps, he inspired his fellow prisoners, and even the guards, who smuggled out his writings, with his commitment, calmness, and courage in the face of the most terrible situations. Even when threatened with torture, the arrest of his parents, his sister, and by financing, he continued to defy the Gestapo, admitting that, as a Christian, he was an enemy of Hitler's totalitarian regime. Bonhoeffer was not prepared to fall in line and stand on the sidelines and watch. But as a disciple of Christ, he knew that it was his duty to oppose the tyranny of such an evil regime. We may not be facing the extremes of Hitler's Germany, but nevertheless, what Bonhoeffer, Bonhoeffer says about discipleship is just as important today. Bonhoeffer this defines discipleship as complete adherence and commitment to Christ. Where discipleship is not this, where it does not involve personal obedience and even sacrifice, does not lead people to stand against what is evil, does not make love for God and others central to everything that Christian does, then, to use Bonhoeffer's words, Christianity without discipleship is always Christianity without Christ. Discipleship does not tolerate anything that might come between Jesus and obedience to him. When Jesus calls, calls us to follow him, he first of all demands that we take a step. So following Jesus isn't just a matter, matter of knowing stuff in our heads. It's not a matter of having grown up with Christianity all of our lives so we just do Christian things like worship, pray, read our Bibles and so forth. We are called to make the next step. So for example, when Peter is in the boat and sees Jesus walking on the water, he asks Jesus to call him out onto the waves. And when Jesus calls him, he has only one way of getting to where Jesus is. He must leave that boat behind and step out onto the water. When Jesus calls Matthew to follow him, there is an instant reaction. There is total obedience. When Jesus speaks to the rich uh, young man who wants to know how to be saved, Jesus tells him to leave behind what is dearest to him, to leave behind his riches, and to step out and follow him. Discipleship involves letting go, leaving behind, following without conditions, not knowing where Jesus will lead you or what consequences will be of following him, not considering what others will think. Discipleship 
requires determination and stickability. When the going gets tough, obedience calls us to stay with Jesus, his church, the people who are fellow disciples with us. Jesus is calling us to encourage and help one another realise what he is calling us to do as his holy people in the church. As I said before, discipleship means nothing less than total and complete obedience to Jesus. The only thing a disciple can do is literally go with Jesus. Before I go any further, and Bonhoeffer makes this point also, obedience is not a way that we get on God's good side and so become good good pals with the one who can answer our prayers, give us forgiveness and the ultimate reward eternal life. Maybe that's how it is in the workplaces. You do a good job. You do what you were asked to do and you are rewarded. But that's not the way it works with God. The starting point is always Jesus. He sees us, confronts us, gets involved with us and calls us. He takes the initiative Any credit anyone can claim for being a follower lies solely with Jesus. He chooses, calls, leads the way, and we follow. When he calls us and confronts us, he calls for obedience. We recognise who he is. We hear his voice, and we obey. Peter James, John, Matthew and the others were confronted by Jesus. They left everything, their family, their income, their friends, the safety of being with people who knew them, and they stepped out, not really knowing where their stepping would lead. But they step out anyway. Trusting Jesus, they leave everything and follow him. The question that we are led to ask ourselves are, have I consciously, deliberately, left anything behind to follow Jesus? Or am I trying to follow him and take everything with me? Remember the three men who came wanting to follow Jesus. Jesus reminds one that there is no security on earth, no earthly security in following. Another wants to bury his father first, And Jesus asked him to let go of the past and come and follow him. Another wants to say goodbye to his family. And Jesus says, you want to follow? That means only looking ahead, not looking back. Pretty rough stuff, isn't it? Obedience is not an option for the followers of Christ. Without obedience, there is no discipleship. Has following Jesus been an easy road to travel? No real demands? Nothing really to upset us? We can follow and nothing much really changes. We don't have to think too hard and long to realise that the much preferred option that we make is to take the easy way out and not make life any harder than it is. We don't have the time, the skills, the drive to do anything other than to survive each day. It's much easier if those who are really keen to do the obedience bit. That's precisely the kind of temptation that Satan puts in front of Jesus. Come on, Jesus, you're God, too good for this suffering servant kind of stuff. Take the easy path, jump off the temple roof and impress everyone with your power and you can be sure that they will follow you. No need for all that obedience kind of foolishness. This is much easier. Jesus was able to put Satan in his place, but unfortunately, too often, we like the easy way, the cosy, non-threatening way, and turn our discipleship into something painless and cushy. We know how hard Peter found it to be a committed disciple. He took the easy 
no risk part when he denied, denied he never ever knew Jesus. Jesus even called him Satan and told him to get out of the way. But look how forgiving and understanding Jesus was. Peter was truly repentant of his failing as a disciple. And Jesus was ever so generous in dying for him and giving him forgiveness. Jesus reached out his hand and called again, Peter, follow me. I've still got work for you to do. Every time we hear about God's grace or receive the body and blood of Jesus in Holy Communion, we are reminded again that he loves us and forgives us and makes us new and clean again. Every day he forgives us. Every day he calls us again to be his disciples and to follow him wherever that might lead us. Every day he calls us by name and says, follow me, I've got work for you to do. So the first thing we need to do is to listen, to hear Jesus calling. You know, I reckon you can sit in church all your life and not actually hear Jesus calling. We hear Jesus is speaking to us through the words of the Bible. We hear sermons after sermon. We go to Bible studies, seminars and conferences. But if all of that doesn't say anything about our lives, and if we don't hear Jesus calling us to be obedient disciples, we end up with good knowledge of things spiritual that has no relevance to the way that we live our lives. Jesus wants to touch your life, make a difference to you. The call to follow Jesus is a call to a new life, a new way of seeing things, a new way of connecting with others, a new way of furthering the work Jesus has for us here at St Andrews. He wants you to know real forgiveness, which comes from genuine repentance, and then enable you to offer that to others. He wants you to know how powerful he can be to make a difference. When you can't see the way forward, when you are sick, when you have messed up, when you are crying out for something to make your life worthwhile, Jesus calls us to follow him with faith and to be active, energetic, enthusiastically committed, loving and loyal, loyal disciples and members of his church. The church is not a club, the kind of group that you can dump if it doesn't happen to suit you or meet your needs or have people in it that you don't like. We do that with a football club or a hobby group and that's not what we do in the church. The church is God's church and he has called us into it for a specific reason, to be disciples who are obedient to his will, to make disciples share his love and forgiveness and to use our lives in whatever we can ensure that others are drawn close to Jesus to the point where they are able to hear his call to them to be disciples. He is calling us all the time, over and over again, offers us his outstretched hand in an act of sheer generosity and he wants us to take it. But to take his hands means letting go of something otherwise you can't get a proper group. Bonhoeffer practised what he preached. He could have kept quiet. He could have blended in and not spoken out. Lots of Christians did. He couldn't see how he could be a disciple and not speak out against what was wrong. And his discipleship cost him his life. I'm the first to admit that being an obedient disciple is, is the hardest thing in my life. To, say, to stay loyal to Christ and his church is tough going. Jesus calls me to follow him, but I really readily admit that at times this is a heavy burden. I could easily give up and have been tempted to do so many times. But there must be an easier way. It's all too hard. Jesus struggled with this in the Garden of Gethsemane, and I'm sure Bonhoeffer would have had his moments too 
when he considered what the cost of discipleship meant to him. I guess what keeps me going and keeps me faithful to God is the fact that Jesus never gives up on me. His obedience all the way to the cross is beyond question. He went to the cross because of my disobedience. I think of people like St Paul whose call to obedience was anything but easy. He suffered in so many ways to be a disciple of Jesus. If anyone had a reason to throw up his hand in frustration and disappointment, it would have been St Paul. What was it that enabled him to remain faithful in a, in a faithful and obedient servant? There are lots of passages from Paul's letters that I could refer to, but perhaps this gives us an insight when he says, all I want is to know Christ. I have the strength to face all conditions by the power that Christ gives me. It's clear he didn't concentrate his focus on the problems that the members of his congregation had. This kind of focus could have easily got him down. He always looked to Jesus. That's often easier said than done. We need God's help. We need the help of our fellow Christians. Paul saw his life totally wrapped up in Jesus, connected to Jesus' death and resurrection through baptism and the Holy Spirit, loved by Jesus even with a love that defies all understanding. Even when he was frustrated with his sinfulness and his own lack of obedience, he always come back to the one thing that remind, that remained solid and sure. Nothing could stop Jesus from loving him, forgiving him, and supporting him in fulfilling his role as a disciple of Christ. In the end, those frustrating and disappointing people were a great delight to him, and he often said how dear they were to him. As we think and pray about Jesus' call to disciples and what it means for us as individuals and as a church, listen again to Jesus' calling. He is patient, forgiving and amazingly generous. But then, obey. Let go. Leave behind. Page 123 of the prayer books. Let us now stand and together affirm the faith of the church as we say together the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally God from the Father, God from God, light from light, True God from true, true God, God begotten not, not made, of one being with the Father, through him all things were made. For us and for, and for our salvation, salvation he, came he came down from heaven, was incarnate of the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary, and became, and became really human. human. For, us for our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered, he suffered death and was buried. Was buried. On, On the third day, day he rose again in accordance with the Scriptures. He ascended to heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is worshipped and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy, Catholic and apostolic church, we acknowledge one baptism and forgiveness of sin. Of sin. And, and we look for the resurrection of the dead and, and the, the life of the world, world to come. Amen. Amen. Let us pray for the world and for the church. Lord God, all power in earth and heaven belongs to you. Shield us in times of danger. Protect us from all that is evil and destructive. 
Renew us and refresh us that we may serve you and that we may proclaim your power and your glory through Jesus Christ our Lord. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We give you thanks for all who seek to work, walk in the way of the Lord. We pray for those who teach us the faith by word and action. We remember those who spend their lives in your service. We pray for all who are seeking you, all who do not know or love you, all who seek contact and who love, long for love. May your church be open and welcoming to all. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Remember all who watch, wait, and weep this day. Those who long for freedom. Those who mourn because of restrictions imposed upon them. Bless all who work for peace, for liberty, and for justice, and all who seek to feed the hungry and care for the poor. Go before us, Lord. Lead us in the direction that you would have us to go. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We give thanks for our homes and our loved ones. We pray for our community, our church, our neighbourhood. We pray for peace and harmony in all our dealings, that we may be aware of the needs around us, and where we can go to serve. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for the world's poor, all displaced people, the refugees, and those who seek political asylum. We pray for all who become discouraged or despondent, for those who have lost the will to strive and strive to live. We pray for all who are ill at this time. We pray for those who are suffering from the COVID pandemic. And we pray for the doctors and nurses and all who call, call to care for them <coughs> and all who care for the ill. So Lord, we ask that you would go before us and guide all who need help at this time. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Father, we remember all who died this week especially those whose death were untimely, those who died through accidents, violence, disasters, the COVID pandemic or any other thing. May they rejoice in the fullness of life which is eternal. May you be with their families and their friends as they mourn those who have died. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Almighty God, you have promised to hear our prayers. Grant that what we have asked in faith, we may by your grace receive, through Jesus Christ, Christ our Lord. Lord. Amen. On page 125 of our prayer list. Jesus said, Come to me, all who labour and heavy labour, and I will give you rest. A new commandment I give to you, that you love one another, even as I have loved you. At the section Mark 21, let us pray. We do not, do not presume to come to your table, table merciful Lord, Lord, trusting in our own righteousness, but in your, your manifold and great mercies. mercies. We are, we are not worthy so much as to gather up the crumbs under your table, table. But, but you, you are, the are the same, Lord, whose, Lord, whose nature is always, always to have mercy. Grant us, therefore, gracious Lord, safety and the peace of your dear Son, Jesus Christ, and to drink his blood that we, we may Lord dwell, dwell with him, with him and, and hear in us. us. Amen. Amen. On page 127. Let us stand for the reading of the We are the body of Christ. The Spirit is with us. us. The peace of the Lord be always with you. And also, and also with, with you. you. Peace, peace with you. Peace with you. Peace. Peace, Michael.
Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, through your goodness we have these gifts to share. Accept and use our offering for your glory and for the service of your kingdom. Blessed be God forever. On page 127, 28, at the Thanksgiving prayer one. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. All glory and honour be yours always and everywhere. Mighty Creator, ever living God. We give you thanks and praise for our Saviour Jesus Christ, who by the power of your Spirit was born of Mary and lived as one of us. By his death on the cross and rising to new life, he offered the one true sacrifice for sin and obtained an eternal deliverance for his people. Therefore, with angels and archangels, and with all the company of heaven, we proclaim your great and glorious name, with a praising you and saying, Holy, Holy, Holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory, Hosanna in Christ. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord, Hosanna in Christ. Merciful God, we thank you for these gifts of your creation, this bread and this wine. And we pray that by your word and Holy Spirit, we who eat and drink them may be partakers of Christ's body and blood. On the night he betrayed, Jesus took bread. And when he had given you thanks, he broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take, eat. This is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. And after supper he took the cup, and again giving you thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Drink from this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it, in remembrance of me. Let us proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Done. Christ, Christ is risen. risen. Christ, Christ will come, come again. again. Therefore we do as our Saviour has commanded, proclaim his offering of himself, made once for all upon the cross, his mighty resurrection and glorious ascension. And looking for his coming again, we celebrate with his prayer, his, his one perfect and sufficient sacrifice for the sins of the whole world. Renew us by your Holy Spirit, Unite us in the body of your Son and bring us with all your people into the joy of your eternal kingdom through Jesus Christ our Lord, with whom and in whom, in the fellowship of the Holy Spirit, we worship you, Father, in songs of never-ending praise. Blessing, Blessing and honour and glory, glory and power are and yours forever and ever. ever. Amen. On page 141. As our Saviour Christ has taught us, we are confident to pray. Our, our Father, Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your, your kingdom, kingdom come. come. Your, your will, will be done, done on earth as it is in heaven. heaven. Give us, us the day our daily bread. Forgive us our sins, sins as, as we forgive those who sin against us. us. Save us from the time of trial and, and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, the glory are yours. Now we pray. Amen. We break this bread to share in the body of Christ. We who many are one body. We all, all share in one, one bread. bread. Jesus, Lamb of God, God, have mercy on us. us. Jesus, bear of our sin, have mercy on us. Jesus, redeemer of the world, grant us your peace. gifts of God for the people of God come let us take this holy sacrament of the body and blood of Christ in remembrance that he died for us and feed on him in our hearts by faith and with thanksgiving Amen the body of Christ the bread of heaven keep many eternal life Amen
Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sin of the world. Blood of Christ, the cup of salvation. Page 143 of the Prayer Book. Gracious God, we thank you that in this sacrament you assure us of your goodness and love. Accept our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving and help us to grow in love and obedience that we may serve you in the world and finally brought us at that table where all your saints feed from you forever. Page 144. Father, we offer we ourselves to you as a living sacrifice through Jesus Christ our Lord. Send us out from the power of your spirit to live and work in your praise and glory. And a peace of God which passes all understanding. Keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of his Son Jesus Christ our Lord. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit be upon you. And remain with you and those who you love and pray for now and always. Amen. And we go in peace to love and serve the Lord. In the name, in the name of, Christ. of Christ. Amen. Amen.